Wow, man, that voice right there. <laughs> the character is Kyle Johnson, but the actor, the producer, the writer, the iconic thespian. Mm. And I say that because of the various platforms that we got the chance to witness, his, witness him on, whether it was touched by an angel. It had to be people who could walk in any genre, who could exist in any space, be themselves and not compromise their integrity in mm. this business, are people I think deserve to be saluted. 100%. Um, wild and crazy kids, Talk hanging with Mr. Cooper. You know Mark Kerr. You know where he's from. Hello. Say it. Say Hello. it. Hello. Hello. Oakland. Hello. Oakland. Oakland. Oakland playmaker, mm. smart guy. Mm. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. And with my brother Tyrese, uh, Taraji, um, Snoop Dogg, all of these legendary people. Mm -hmm. Ring come on. V Vin come on, come, come on. on, man. And he was one of the most outstanding characters in the movie Baby Boy. Talk to him. And he continues to succeed. That right there was from a, a clip from the, pro uh, the, pro the series called Saturdays, yes, sir. which is airing Fridays, 9 p.m. on the Disney Channel. Yes, sir. You cannot work on the Disney Channel at this stage of his career and be broke. You know he's getting paid. <laughs> Give it up for the one and Talk only Big old Omar yeah. Goody. Hey. I appreciate you, man. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, man. Come on, man. Let me tell you something, man. When I see you on the screen, it makes me happy. Good. <laughs> me too. Me too. And my kids and my wife. Make them excited. Everybody happy, right? Daddy on the screen. Daddy's yes. on the screen. But yes, you, yes. You, you, your energy, and I always felt like this, a certain people. Jamie Foxx has that. Mm -hmm. If I see Jamie um, on on a, on a screen uh, on any capacity, it right. makes me happy right, right. to see him. Chris Tucker has that ability. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Yes, certain yes, yes. people who have that. And I believe that you have that. Yeah. And I commend you because you come from a, a entertainment family. We play yes, the sir. main ingredient. Come Everybody on now. Everybody loves the food. Yeah. Plays. plays the food. I mean, you plays already the know. Food. You already know. <laughs> but they know um, they love it. They know they love it. Your father was the um, the lead singer in yes, the uh, Cuba, 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 Cuba Gooding Singer. Yeah. Your brother's uh, Academy Award winning yeah. actor. You yeah. know, and so it could be hard to find your lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you found your lane. I definitely found my lane, man. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's it's a pleasure. One, I just have to say it's a pleasure to be here, brother. Thank Thanks you, man. Thank Thanks you, brother. Come you, you on, know, man. You know, so much you've done for the culture. You know what I oh, mean? I appreciate you, I applaud Come you, on, my man. brother. Thank you. Um, you know, and I, it ain't lost on me that you brought the Christian in after the Muslim. The brother was, he did <laughs> had the black on black on black on black. The water bottle was black. The hat was black. I almost, took, I almost took my white hat off. I didn't want to offend the brother. I was like, damn, this brother is black on black on black. You know what I mean? Them high level conversations he was having. There's going to be some low level conversations going for the next 30 minutes. I want y'all to lower y'all expectations right now because we finna just. We finna just act a monkey for a little bit. All I'm saying is we finna act a monkey. You said act a monkey? <laughs> we, finna, we finna act a plum fool up in here is all I'm trying to say is what I'm saying. And, I, you know, I'm drinking all this coffee. Let my coffee black, though. Tell him, let him know the coffee. Ain't gonna, coffee I don't know if he put ice in his, but I put ice in mine. No I just, cream I just, in your coffee. No coffee, though. No coffee, though. My, purpose, my, my, right? my, my <laughs> coffee got a fist. Um, <laughs> coffee got a fist. <laughs> coffee got a straight Tracy. fist. Got a fist for coffee. Um. But no, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. You, you know, you, you brought up Pops, man. You played the song yeah. and it got me leaning to the side here. You know, I uh, don't want to start too heavy, but, you know, he passed in 2017, a yeah. week before his birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, we, he passed on 420. So oh. that messed up. You know, I used to smoke before I was a Disney dad anyway. Before okay. I, yeah. <laughs> that really? messed it all the way up. No, back in the day, back in the day, man. You know, yeah. I do hip hop too. So I used to, you know, I used to do what I got to do to get, get in the zone and whatnot. But you know what I mean? But it, it's dope <laughs> because, uh, you know, I still, I'm actually, I'm still doing music, man. We, I know we got to do that on another interview because we came to talk oh, about Saturdays. We got to, we got Crystal to DJ right there. If you got him ready too, I mean, whatever I got we got to do, okay. we can do whatever okay, we got to man. do, man. You know, I come, I come prepared. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm 46 though, so you're not going to cell phone here. So I'm like, might not all be in here, but I'll be like, yo, check it right here, man. I got it. Pull it up. Bars. Bars is in the phone. Bars is in the phone. Uh, yeah, no, I got a, I got a new uh, <laughs> a song that I dedicated to my father, uh, okay. and it releases two days, or one day after his birthday, right? Yeah. His birthday is the 27th, which is uh, tomorrow. Okay. So this song releases uh, in two days, and it's called Legacy, and it actually starts with Everybody Plays the Fool. Wow. wow. Right? It starts with that, and what my, you know, what's funny is him, as an entertainer, if y'all knew him, you know, especially when you're, when, when you are an artist, mm -hmm. right? You don't know what song's going to be the hit. Right, so he could sing, sing. Yeah, you know man. what I mean. His voice, his lyrics were just insane. His lyrics, his voice, what he can do with his throat was just, uh, just, just amazing. Uh, pause. Uh, so, but what I'm, what I'm saying is, <laughs> what he would do. Nobody was gonna say that. Nobody was gonna do that. Slide it, slide it. It's Disney. Come on, I'm trying to keep it Disney. I'm trying to keep it Disney. We're talking about Saturdays. I'm trying to keep it Disney. We on the air. We can do the thing. Um, so you know, his hit was "Everybody Plays the Fool." So at the end, every time he performed it, he would feel like he had to show them his real vocal range, other than. Just this hit that took off. Yeah. You know, yeah. so he would do this solo at the end of every live.
live performance. So I took that solo and put it in the middle of my song so that he can represent himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I met a brother named Steven Ellis. Uh, he goes by Keys the Mogul, right? And he was like, yo, man, I got some beats for you. Send me the beats. We started working on a couple songs. And he was like, but this one here is something special I want to send to you. When he sent it, I was driving. I had to pull over. I had to get emotional. I was like, wow. yo, bro, I can't believe that you somebody finally did something with my father's voice that I can represent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That I can I could see him because I know him. Anything that we try to do, try to remake, try to remix, he's going, stop it. Stop it. That ain't it. Like You it know what I mean? Work, like, right? That ain't it. That ain't it. So yeah. I said, well, how about you represent yourself? And that's the song Legacy. So we're excited about that, man. It comes out in a couple oh, days. Oh, man. Well, platform. you got to, okay, give me the song. I'm going to email it to our producer right now Check. so we can in, play it at the end of the interview. Right, sounds, okay, sounds, I'm going to like okay. yeah, put sounds my like email blessing. in there and right. we do it like that. You we'll said, do it. We'll do it. Mm -hmm. okay, a lot of people um, have tapped into the main ingredients music yes. for sampling purposes, so yes. on and so forth. Yes, Alicia Keys, a lot of people. A lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you all have rights yes, over there? Yes, we do. The check okay. comes right back to us. Yes, okay. Man. Yes, ma'am. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Some of our friends like, yo, can we use your daddy's music? I'm like, yes, you can. Yes, you absolutely can. Can we call Miles real quick? Miles, we still can Yes, yes. Do we need to sign off on anything? No, we'll get ours. Just tell him to go ahead and have fun. Yeah, oh, Steve Harvey playing it on this new thing. We like this. We like, ching, ching. Go ahead now. Go ahead. Kids got to eat. Kids got to eat. You know what I mean? Stay so, out my so, pockets now. Daddy so how, how many people has used your sampled your dad's music? Man, I don't know the exact number, but I mean. So it, like, name some it's, names. So. It's like I said, Alicia Keys is using it. Okay. We got uh, Steve Harvey, who's who's got the new Judge show. It's playing okay. at the beginning of that. It was in the Joker movie, you uh -huh. know what I mean? Right after he passed when we saw Joker, we were sitting there watching us. I was like, wait a minute, they didn't just play a piece, they played the whole song. Just yes. like you did right when I got in here and almost yes. started crying. Yes. They played the whole song through the movie. Uh -huh. So if you watch Joker again, you'd be like, wait, what's he talking about? Oh, that's his pops music in the back. Yeah, that's wow. him. And that's kind of the point of the song that I released, because a lot of people don't know, that's my father. That's your dad. When I was cutting the record, the, the, the engineer turned to me and was like, wait, that's your daddy right there? I'm like, man, if you don't knock it off, just push the button, push the button. Yes, that's my daddy. You know what I mean? And then when I released a, uh, you know, an Instagram post with my brother listening to it that uh -huh. joint went viral. They that's were like, oh, that's his brother? Dang, I was today years old when I realized Cuba Jr. was your brother. And then the people that do know call me Omar Gun Jr. and I just want to grab him and shake him a little bit. Like, come on, man. Why, why would his brother be named Jr.? You can't be two juniors. Oh, you can't be two juniors, but <laughs> yeah, you, you'd be surprised how much it happens. It, but listen, I, well, so what was it like? Because I, I, <laughs> me and your brother done party, uh, you know, Okay. Over the years, okay. uh, many of times, his, his energy. Both of you have this amazing energy about yeah. you. You know, you want to be around y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, just want to. Hey, hey, you ain't got to even interact. I just right, want right. to watch y'all. Yeah. You know? But what yeah. was it like growing <laughs> up in that household? It was dope, man. I mean, you know, the difference is there's a nine year gap between the two of us. So I would always be his baby brother. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What I'm saying? Yeah. And it was just, it was a generation, it wasn't a whole generation, a decade. Shit, he looks good, dude. I Don't want he? to nine years. No, I know, shoot, let me take these glasses off. Okay. Okay. You, you, know, oh, you look good, oh. <laughs> wait a minute. Damn, wait I didn't know it yeah, oh, nine years. It's just early. That's why I got these on. He ain't that Hollywood. Don't trip. It's just, <laughs> okay. That's what the coffee and the water's for, man. Okay. It's eight o'clock. It's okay. really the wake up show, man. Back okay. in the day. Morning show. Hello. Okay. I said, what time is the car coming? Oh, snap. Okay. Um. But yeah, man, so he's always had that energy, but he's always been my big bro. So, you know, if I'd get into fights like real street fight I'd go running home to a bro these dudes just jumped me out there or oh, what you know what I mean he's always been that dude and we have always had that energy and people are like what are you on man coffee water and life that's it that's, that's it right? that's it you know what I mean you ain't uh -huh. gotta be on something just to be on something you know what I'm talking about where did y'all grow up what neighborhood y'all grow up uh, so my brother and my sister were mm -hmm. born in the Bronx okay my mother and father were from Harlem they Harlemites born right around the corner from uh, the Apollo yes indeedy right but five years after um, my sister was born uh, April, shout out to April, shout out to Ebo. Uh, she, uh, they, we all moved to California. Okay. So I was born in uh, Lake. <laughs> I laugh when I say this. Every time people ask me, it's a different answer. But it's Lakeview Terrace, right? Mm -hmm. So I always go, yeah, I was born in Lakeview Terrace. And then I looked at my <laughs> my birth certificate, it said Pacoima. So you know, depending on who asked, I'll be like, "Yeah, from Pacoima, homie. Uh, I'm from Lakeview Terrace. It just depends, just depends on who's asking." But uh, that, <laughs> that's where we came uh, when I was uh, well, when they was when they well, shoot, she was around five years old, and five years later I was born. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I went to like North Hollywood High School. You know what I'm okay. saying? We lived in Victorville for a while. Uh -huh. You know, there was a period where we were homeless. You know, was when Pop's music took off was in the 70s, then he went to Africa during apartheid, uh -huh. all that, and that was a big no-no for uh, artists out here to perform. But he did, he couldn't tell Cuba Gooden Sr. nothing. Yeah. But when he came back and told him them checks weren't coming in no more because he went out there and he had he was blacklisted, the music came off the radio, he had to start over again. So when he started over, all he knew was, I gotta go chase the money. So he went back to New York, we had to make our own way. 
So, you know, moms, my brother, my sister, and a large Great Dane all got into one of them Bobcat uh, <laughs> SUVs. And we went, one well, wasn't called SUVs back then, but it was Station Wagon. Uh -huh. And we traveled around. You know, we, we went to, we started in the high desert where her parents were. Uh -huh. And then we migrated, <laughs> basically, down to uh, the valley. Uh -huh. that's, very, that's where we landed. We stopped at a few shelters and whatnot on the way. But my brother knew he wanted to be an actor. But y'all lived in shelters along the way? Shelters, bro. Wow. We stayed in the car. It was, yeah. After no, was the great. hits. Yeah, after the yeah his hits yeah yeah, yeah. after your pops yeah. hits the yeah. main ingredient hits, yeah yeah y'all was that. living in shelters it's shelters bro shelters bro wow. shelters bro yeah this these 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 are facts man you find out a little bit a little, something new every morning don't you yeah. um but yeah so then once we landed there my brother chased his dream right so he would audition and he would do his things one day I'm like nine years old I walk into his agent's office and pick up a script for him mm -hmm. and his agent sees me I we never did baby talk in our house we always talked clear we had good diction I'd smile I never had braces but my teeth were straight imagine that West Indian blood okay mm -hmm. so uh she was like okay uh how about I send you out on an audition you ever think about being an actor I'm like I'm nine no I have not <laughs> you know that wasn't on my radar but I went out on on a call I had two auditions in one day and booked one so for me the rest was history three years later I was able to get my mom to quit her two jobs, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and become my full-time manager and was able to support the family. What was wow. that you booked? That's amazing. Get that around of applause. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I booked, uh, a, it was a show, it was actually a McGruff the Crime Dog. Uh, McGruff the Crime <laughs> Remember Dog. McGruff the Crime Dog? Yeah. yeah. That was the first job I ever booked. And then, uh, like, the first big thing, I was on Webster. Remember Webster? I remember yeah. Webster. first speaking yeah. role on Webster. And then uh, a couple of years later, I booked Wild and Crazy Kids on Nickelodeon. Mm. And then that just rolled, man. I put Hang with Mr. Cooper next five years. And then uh, right after that, Smart Guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Next thing you know, I'm 24 years old. You know what I'm talking about? And the, the dope thing about Smart Guy, and watch me segue this, watch this here. So the dope thing about Smart Guy is it was on WB, right? We did 75 episodes on WB. That's and then great. after the show got canceled, it got picked up by Disney. Right, uh, so I was on Disney, oh, and that's when wow. really, you know, I got most of my fan base. They were like, "Oh man, we used to, this show on Smart Guy is great." And it's like, "Oh, you just now hip to it, right?" So then, flash forward, you know what I'm saying? Years later, I'm back on Disney as a Disney dad. Come on, for a show Saturdays, Saturdays, Fridays. Which is, which is, yeah, I'm gonna love take a sip of water if I talk about Saturdays. That's, that's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, man. I love that. God man. bless you. That's yeah. blessings, right blessings, circle. blessings. Let's do this. I want to go into a song. Torch, pick something great, right. um, and then I want to come back and let's talk about Saturdays. Let's and, do that. And let's talk more wow. with Omar Gooding. This yes, story is amazing. Yes, <laughs> All right, have to be. I know you got to go to Urban View. Yeah, I do. But thank you for sharing that. We were we yep. Sway and I before we got live on air. We're having a conversation this yep. morning about alignment. And mm. just thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You yeah. know. Oh, God has been working uh, for, for 46 years for me. Amen. You know I mean. That's, uh -huh. that, that's just my age. Oops. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, but he's he's good. He's Beautiful. good, and he continues to show his his miracles in in our life. I had a praying mama. You know what I mean? So she yeah. prayed things into existence, just like literally, like we saw him work. So that's just you know, that's all I know. That's all you know. Hey man, Big O is here. Ch yeah. Omar Gooding. Have the beat. How can they reach you? Hit me up. Um, CanvasColors.co. CanvasColors.co. Get that Billy talk. Okay. We're going to have more with um, Omar Gooding, 888-742-3345. Torch, take us to song. Any song. It's Sway in the Morning. Broadcasting live from Hollywood. We got Hollywood right in the house. <laughs> On Shade 45. One of the most talented people uh, we watch navigate through Hollywood, Omar Gooding, man. Somebody, I just feel great. I said it earlier, Tracy G, DB. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're a, a movie fanatic. Um, I just feel great when I see you playing roles, man. I'm Thanks, not bro. even gassing you. So when your name came across the list, I was like, we got to get him. <laughs> we got to get him. Tracy, nice. Tracy, you want to interject? Yeah, absolutely. Omar, I wish I could be in the studio with you, bro, because you are just so fun and animated yes. and charming. I appreciate you. Um, I love you know, that. I love that. I wish you was here now. Yeah, but we got I this feel you technology. Here. I can feel your presence. You Go can ahead, feel my presence. You know, <laughs> when we was kind of just pedaling backwards and going through your entire career, career and I'm like dang I like grew up side by side with Omar this mm. is crazy it made me think mm. of earlier in the show we were talking about Raven Simone who is someone else mm. we also grew up with right touch, and, touch. yeah uh -huh. and um, someone well. someone that she co-starred with she was all hanging with Mr. Cooper. Mm -hmm. Word, yeah. facts. Yeah. That's yeah. a baby raven. Yeah, baby raven. Yeah. After she finished Cosby, we we, we uh, signed her in, uh, who, what year was that? It was in the 90s, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she came on, I think, third season. Did you know, like, do, did she have that gift? Star, that the yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. 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 No, yeah. she was awesome. She was awesome. Everybody yeah. in that cast was great. Um, you know, I've been blessed to work with uh, very talented 
cast members um, and some not. Uh, you know, when when you no know, not not throw no shade, but it's just like you know sometimes I know I have to do more. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like if they in the scene with me, I know I got to turn it up or some I can kind of lay back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I got all that from Mark Curry. Mark Curry was a bad boy, and I remember I did his podcast, and he was like, "Man, you had great timing when you were young, man. I don't know how you had such good timing." And I was like, "Brother, I learned it from you. You don't know. I was I was soaked up like a sponge. I would watch how you would handle every single situation." And Mark, yeah, that's another long uh, interview we can talk about that brother there, man. I owe him a lot, man. Like serious, well, I got into some. Other, well, like, give me an example. Yeah, no, I got into some trouble, um, uh, you know, in my regular life, just being me and hanging uh-huh. around with dudes that had my back, so to speak, you know, just in the sense of, you know, people say, oh, man, you you know, this celebrity, you hang out with that celebrity. I don't hang out with celebrities. What if I get into a street fight? I don't know if, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio got hands. I don't know. I need somebody that I know got my back, like yeah. real, you know. <laughs> so things happen, you know, and, um, you know, I was all over the news for like 24 hours, and Mark called me immediately and was like, look, brother, this is what you're going to need to do. First of all, you got to get out in front. You got to apologize to everybody. You got to own it. You got to man up. Don't go in there with your head down and consult. You no, know, just say, I'm, I was, I made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Apologize. And, and as soon as I did that I mean everybody stood up the relief on everybody and they huddled around me and you know it was it, it was that type of guidance that he gave me yeah. early other than leading by example that led to uh you know I mean, who, who, who knows? They could have kicked me off the show, and then who knows what I'd be. Is that rare? I know, Tracy, I don't mean to hijack yeah. your question. We're going to come back to it. But yeah. was that rare to get that kind of guidance? Absolutely. A yeah. lot of people, they just, you know, if they're on top or if they're doing their thing, it's just they're not worried about everybody else. Uh-huh. It, that's not how things work. You know, you're like, oh, you work with such and such, and you do music. Did you give him your music? Did he put you on? No, that, he's got his thing. You know, he's they, they want you to kind of work for it. They'll let you swim. I got a song called Swim that kind of talks about it. They let you, they'd rather see you drown. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, you sink or swim mentality type of thing. It's rather than help you out or throw your life raft. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So him, he was the type of brother that was like, nah, I see something in you, man. I, we ain't losing you. Mm-hmm. Let me talk to you. You know, and I've worked with other cats that just kind of, you know, you rub them the wrong way. And, and then again, uh, also another interview. Yeah, <laughs> That's it, man. Okay, well, you got to come back. Tracy, we'll go ahead. Video, yeah, well, oh, I was thinking um, because one of Raven's co-stars says that she was pretty much from Ra- um from uh, um, That's So Raven said that mm-hmm. she believed Raven was underestimated uh, when she first came mm. on the show and she was initially um, hired to be the sidekick but then showed how wow. she had such you know star power and they switched roles exactly yeah I'm wondering if you've ever had I mean you've been in so many different lanes of this entertainment yeah. industry have you ever felt underestimated and then you showed improved and they ended up Absolutely. upgrading the role Absolutely. that you had that is my career my love and it's, a great, it's an excellent question because no one asked that but yes I I became the king of the one-liners, the the scene stealer. Like I started from the bottom, literally. I, you know, I was an extra. You know, I was a featured extra. Then I'd have one line. You know, that when I talked about being on Webster, I was uh, an announcer. I had one scene, and it was you have this one speech. Let's go. You know, in the audition room, I used to be the king of the audition rooms. I said, okay, this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put a. And then my mom thought about it. Maybe my mom and my sister. They said, you know what you should do? You should put a microphone in your jacket with the cord and everything. Just <laughs> tuck it in your pocket sleeve, and then just when you walk in to start, yank that bad boy out, and then uh-huh. just see what happens. And it worked. I walked in there, and they, I'm watching all the other kids in the room. They, I say, okay, nobody brought props but me. Watch this. You know, I say, hi, who are you? Hi, Omar Gooding. I said, okay, you ready? Yeah, sure. I said, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the cord hit the floor, and they all fell off the floor, and they were. <laughs> laughing everything you know you always got to bring something you know and it landed me to roll but you know when I started on hang with Mr. Cooper I was uh seven out of 13 you know what I mean which Mm -hmm. means I wasn't in every single episode I was a series regular by the third season you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying I was just Irvin Rodman in the chair and then I had to work my way I'm watching Mark I'm watching how he does I'm feeding off the crowd I'm learning to improv and improvise and kind of add my own thing to every single line and you know I rose to the top, you know what I'm saying? And then when they did Smart Guy, when they brought me on, I was just supposed to be the bully. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which mm-hmm. evolved to the best friend of Jason Weaver, and now he's and now it's Marcus and Moe, and now it's whose show is it, and who's the funniest and so forth, and the writing and so forth. Um, you know, and then it, go, it goes on and on. I mean, the, the, the way I... I actually made uh, <laughs> that I landed Baby Boys. If I try to tell this quickly, the this, this story yeah, was this. Gotta tell it quickly. I did a show. I'm talking about that. How did you land Baby Boy? <laughs> Intriguing yeah. mind. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> ah, this is funny. So, I auditioned for a movie called Freedom Song. Right now, mm-hmm. Freedom Song was about the first sit-ins in Mississippi. It was a TNT film. Right. So, I auditioned. I did great. Because the room loved me. They, you, it's great, man. We love you. We'll see you on set. Type of thing. You know. I walk out of there like, all right. I didn't get the part. They start filming. They hired someone else due to politics. Yeah. You know, someone else got the role. That person went out to a nightclub, got punched in the eye, went back to work the next day. Somebody did a drive-by hand signal to him, shook him up so bad, he jumped on a plane and flew back home. 
Then they called up Omar Gooding. Said, hey, man, yeah, remember that role? You, Yeah, yeah, they need you to come out there to fly out to Wilmington, North Carolina. I said, I thought they was already filming. Yeah, no, no, they, one of the actors quit. I was like, they do that? Black actors quit? <laughs> who, who do where they, where they make people like where this they at? Do that at? So I went, yeah, where, where they do that at? So I pulled up, you know what I mean? And I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing. And, you know, and um, we had one, you know, it wasn't a huge role. It was just, I was one of the kids that were uh, sitting at the lunch counter for the sit-ins to get arrested. So I showed some intensity on my face. And um, flash forward a few years later, my mother gives me a call. She was managing me. Mm-hmm. And she said, uh, yo, I got a call from John Singleton. I said, yeah. wow, that's great. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, uh, Mrs. Gooding, listen, I made one of your sons a movie star. I would like to make your other son a movie star. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a script for him, and I will send it to you. And um, uh, give me his phone number and so forth. And then I was like, uh, yeah, give, give, give him a number, Mama. Go, go ahead and you, you, you can do that. So he calls me. says, I got a script for you, brother. Hit the gym. And I see you in about three months. And I read this script, and it was another thing that they just floored me, you know. And I was like, "Bro, how did you even consider me?" For he said, "Man, I saw you in this this movie called uh, Freedom Song." Wow, I said, for, for Freedom, Freedom Song. <laughs> I was in there that long, and yeah. you saw that boy. That man was such a visionary, man. That for him to see that role in me by me sitting at this lunch counter, you know what I mean? Yeah, for that long was just amazing. And then I just, you know, then the role itself was it 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 it, it was therapy for me. Because being an actor, being a child actor, I touched on, you know, my friends and being in the streets and so forth and so on. You know, people would say, oh, man, that's that guy from that show, blah, 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 blah. I said, yeah, that's my job. You don't know me as a, as a person. Uh-huh. So I would have to defend myself. I did music. I did, you know what I'm saying? All I had was in groups. You know, my father and mother divorced, got back together. My brother got back together. He said, yo, let's do a group. You know, I, I did. It was a lot. It was a lot. You know what I mean? a lot going on, right? It was a lot going on. But we got into situations. You know what I'm saying? But always knowing what I have to lose was a gift that I had at a young age. So I all, you know, a lot of cats, they make rash decisions that change their entire life. Right. Mm-hmm. And I had people around me that knew, come on, bro. Nah, 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 let it go. Or, well, Hey, that happened, but Hey, thing, let God handle it like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Without even saying it, that's how it moves. So there was a, a, a direct incident that happened. It was very traumatic and God took care of it before I could even have a chance to, mm-hmm. you know, one cat got arrested. The other one's no longer with it. It was, it was done. Then I get this script, and I read this script, and I'm like, wait a minute, you mean I can channel all this aggression, all this anger, everything that I've you know, experienced as a young black man out here in these streets trying to sort of prove himself and show that I'm just a man. Like, don't just say, oh, you're that funny dude. Like, knock it off. Like, I'm, uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's uh-huh. another side that hopefully I don't have to show. Wait, I can just channel all of that and aim and point? Okay, bet. Let's go. You know, I'm like, how does he know that that's even in me? Because these are things that I keep. They don't make TMZ. They yeah. were, there was no social media. They mm-hmm. wasn't like that. They don't. So people don't know what I go through or what I went through. You know, as a as a, as a young adult. But even when I when I auditioned for him, the three months later, he was like, "All right, you look good, man. All right, you lost some weight." I was like, "Yeah, 20 years old. You can, you can drop 20 pounds in a weekend." You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, <laughs> so so you know, he's like, "You look good. Sound good. That's cool. All right, all right. We'll be in touch." Right? A whole month goes by. I didn't hear nothing. A month. And then I got a phone call that said, "You got the role." I said, "What?" But even then, there was still a process. Yeah, I still had to get that kind of that eye of the tiger, like you mm-hmm. know, uh, you know, I had to had to lock in to Sweet Pea. Yeah, you know, because I was raw. I had all this rage, and I'm rah, 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 rah. and they had a couple cats say, "Look, man, all that yelling, all you doing, that's not it. That's not it, bro. Bring it in. You got to internalize it." Uh-huh. And that's where Sweet Pea came out, because I was almost like talking through my teeth. I was so, yeah. I had so much, so I had to like, yeah, you got all that rage. Well, find me a job, Jody. Like I had to be able to mm-hmm. get that without yelling. Find me a job. No, that's ridiculous. No, but he's gonna be angered but no one trying trying to control it yeah. trying to temper that rage and uh but once i got it I locked in yo you killed sweet pea so great man like, <laughs> like I, I after watching you as sweet pea because it's true people didn't really know who you were right but when i watch you portray sweet pea no yeah. oh i said oh there's something else going on in his life yeah because it was so authentic absolutely at that time to yeah. who sweet pea was yeah. and what the environment was bro it was so important um you know, for John Singleton to write these type of roles and these type of movies. I did a screening for the film out in uh, Flint, Michigan, uh, just about a few weeks ago, and it's funny because I was sitting in the front row. I was kind of narrating it through mm-hmm. the goals, cracking jokes because, that's you know, that's my personality and whatnot. And I remember there was a couple women next to me, and it was just like, oh, man. And they were like, yeah, that's right. He was a little punk, but you was the man. You shot him. And I said, well, baby girl, that's the point of the movie. He was the baby boy. John is writing um, movies that l- make you look a little bit deeper into what the black man is going through. He he saw himself on the floor. That's why he didn't shoot him. Yeah. My character was like, yeah, forget all that. We got to shoot this dude, look around and get us up out of here, right? Boys in the hood. Trey got out the car. Mm-hmm. How many brothers you wish got out the car? 
You yeah. understand what I'm saying? These are the type of roles that he's writing. These are the points that some people are missing. They're just enjoying the entertainment value of it all. You know what I'm saying? So um, with this opportunity, man, it was it was great for me because I was able to show that side to people that doubted it. To long-windedly get back to her question, yes, that that role itself helped open many doors for me. Wow, man. Omar Gooding is Thank here, you. man. And John Singleton said, I made one song, Cuba Gooding Jr., one, uh, one, one son, son, son <laughs> Cuba Gooding Jr. star yeah. with um, Boys in the Hood. Yeah, a movie star. A movie star. I'd like to make the other one a movie star. Because I did a lot of television. I yeah. did so much television back in that day. Those 90s sitcoms and all that. You weren't taken seriously in an audition room or you know on paper. You know what I'm saying? To play this role of a dramatic such and such and so on and so forth. Till they see it. Mm -hmm. You know, until it's proven. So if everyone says, yep, that movie was dope. Okay, great. Let's bring Omar in for this this dramatic role. Let's keep this thing popping. Y'all should have a picture of John Singleton on the wall in y'all living room. You ain't lying. There, no, there's several. There's there, several. There's several? There really are. That was Tyrese is my little brother. That was his yeah. debut, oh, man. man. What do you remember about Tyrese on set back Tyrese then? Tyrese was dope, man. I mean, we, we bumped heads because, you know, for me, I had to prove myself just like he had to prove himself. John was very, very deliberate. He said, look, bro, uh, you know, you 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 going to anchor this thing. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have you with him, boom, boom, boom. Do what you can, show him, you know what I'm saying, how to get down as an actor, right? And I'm like, all right, cool, we're going to act. Now, Tyrese's thing was he wanted to be friends, and he wanted to hang out, want to do this. I said, I got no problem, come to my house, let's go, you know, and he show up. It's a bunch you of dudes. you talking about offset. Offset, like, okay, yeah, 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 let's really buddy, buddy, come okay. stay at my house, come stay at my house. And I was like, bro, I see you on set. Like, that's <laughs> just, I was just so locked in that that kind of rubbed in the wrong way. Uh -huh. So on set, on camera, you couldn't tell. Uh, yeah. The brother did a phenomenal job. Like, y'all must be best friends in real life. I was like, well, no, because, you know, mm -hmm. that's just not how I was at the time. I've learned since then. I've yeah. grown to know that you have to be likable. If you want to book a part, people listening that want to inspire an actor, say, look, you got to sell yourself. There's a lot of people that are that can sell themselves really good. They get the part, but they're not that good. Mm -hmm. But people just like to be around them. I like to be around him, so I'm going to book him for this role, book her for this role. She's not that good, whatever, but I love being around her. You know what I mean? So sometimes you have to sell yourself. You have to show that you're likable, that you're somebody that people want to work with over long periods of time. So I, I had to learn that. Back then, I was like, look, I do my job. I'll see you tomorrow. Did y'all bump heads for real? We got close. We we really, you know, we pulled out as men. We had yeah. a real man standoff conversation. He said, is there somewhere we could talk? I said, you can go to the park. Ain't going to be nobody around. Ain't nobody talk, blah, blah, boom. And we got it all out and said, all right, cool. All right, all right. I'll see you on set. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was it. But it wasn't, it was like, ah, we're fighting and falling around. Me and Ving Rames did. You but in it, real life? In Well, in the rehearsal room. You didn't hear the story about the rehearsal room? What happened? Oh, man, I don't even know if I can say, can we curse on here? So I, so, 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 <laughs> <laughs> John Singleton was a master at uh, motivation. Okay. Right? So we had these rehearsals. Every single day we had rehearsals, right? For like two weeks before we actually filmed. Everyone always asks about, you know, were you improv on the sh in the movie? I know that prayer was you. John wrote every single word. When he says writer, director, he's a writer, right? But he lets us play in these little two weeks before we film. So in that playing period, you know, I'm thinking I'm the man and I'm doing this and that and the third. And uh, at the end of one of the rehearsals, John looks me dead in the face and says, yeah, tomorrow I think, um, you know, everybody needs to lock in. And he looked me dead in the eye and said, but some of us need to step it up. And he walked out the room. I said, I know he just did not. What? Uh -huh. I'm 24 years old. I know you ain't the war. Watch this. So the next day, I was fired up. I was fired up. As soon as we walked in, you know, I'm looking at everybody crazy. They can already feel the energy is different, right? <laughs> and he's like, first, first thing we're going to do, you sit in the middle. Whoever wants to sit in the middle, uh, you sit in the chair, and everybody's going to gather around him in the cast and ask you questions. You just remember, stay in character. Who wants to go first? He couldn't even get first out of his mouth before I just was in the chair. Uh -huh. And I was like, let's go. And every time somebody asked me, so I was fired up. What? Yeah. But yeah, you remember last week when I came to your house, you owe me that money? And they were like, what is he talking about? That is not in the script. I was just going. I was mm -hmm. on, right? And then it was like, okay, this next combination is uh let this okay, Omar and Ty, you guys get up there and then you do word word play where you say one word and you respond in one word, you know, we're doing that. And I'm just just aggressive all the way. Every time <laughs> uh Ving stood up, I jumped in his face, grabbed him when we fell on the bed, was rustling around and whatnot. And I was, you know, like I said, young, working up to what, what? You ain't even that strong. I'm fake muscle. I'm just going off on him, right, right, right? So uh, uh, it's amazing as I, as this walks in, as this all falls in line, right? Because I tell you where I'm from. I was born in in the valley yeah. of California, right? Which is not L.A. the city, like all my friends were affiliated in the range of Compton and, and, and South Central and so forth and so on. But I was born and raised in the valley, so a lot of people know that. So anyway, so we keep going, and I'm super fired up all the moment, and we get to a, a point, you know, because John, the great thing about John is he he had the, the old school video camera, and he yeah. would just follow you around, like, and action, just go, you know. And he never said cut. He just let us do us for like two hours straight. So we get towards the end of this two-hour session, and um, I'm back in Ving Rang's face again. I'm like, what you going to do? He said, boy, if you don't shut up, where are you from? 
I said, where am I from? You know, I said, I'm from Six O Crip. You know, that, that's yeah. what I, first thing popped my head. You know, <laughs> so Six O Crip. He's like, Six O Crip. He said, shut your ass up. You're from the valley, right? And the room kind of went, ooh. And I remember I looked down at Johnson and AJ. <laughs> she kind of hit me with the, I think, at a barber chair. And they looked at me, mm, what you going to do? Remember? And uh-huh. all the nights when they were like, hey, what you going to do, brother? And I looked up and I said, I, I got in his face. I said, bang, bang, you dead. He said, them ain't no guns, bitch. Slap my hand, pick me up, and drop me on the floor. Bam. We rolling around. And for like three seconds, I had him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? We got the four second, five second. seconds. First of all, I can't use my arms. Matter of fact, now I'm pinned to the floor. Man is on top of me, right? And I was able to squeeze my hands up to his forehead. And I grabbed it. And I said, cut, nigga. <laughs> And we stood up, and I know that's wow. what Disney just jumped off the line. They're like, all right, we don't need to see it. We don't need to But that, that was the end of the, the, the whole rehearsal. So we got, I remember Ving walked over, and he said, damn, brother, what happened to you? Did you go to acting class overnight or something? I was like, yo, man, I just had to bring it today. You know, we good? He's like, oh, yeah, we good, man. You a bad member, John. I said, all right, man, I'll see you on set. <laughs> and that was how John was as a motivator, and that was like my that's process of getting story. there. You know what I'm saying? So. So wow. yeah, but everybody, everybody there though, we did that round of applause, man. That was a amazing <laughs> story, man. No, I no, got no. nervous. <laughs> 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 and y'all forehead. been thick as thieves. Oh, ever thick since. as thieves. We did another movie called Percentage, man. Yeah. You know, I worked with Taraji. I played her uh, um, love interest in a film that she did called District. Like you know, we, like, AJ. Cats, what about AJ? AJ, I love her. Oh, oh man, every time beautiful. I see her, I love her. Every time mm-hmm. we, everybody on the set. And me and Tyrese Cool is fan fan now. You know, yeah, we okay. we chopped it up um, about a couple of things. You know, he had some ideas about doing a reboot for the movie. That was you know it's just tough to do everybody keeps saying sequel and how you gonna fix it how you gonna yes you know, how you gonna do that john's gone you know yeah, yeah you know he has a really really good idea on how to bring everything together but Baby you know boys. powers of these gotta yeah yeah, yeah just kind of like two like what yeah it's like grown a, man what's the sequel i was like yeah when one dude shot the other one everybody okay but um but anyway so that that experience led to you know projects like saturday Yes, which Saturdays. is an thing for Saturday. There you go, yeah, man. Yeah, you start Who, the button now, who's Cal Johnson? So and- let me let me tell you about Saturday. This is the exciting thing about Saturdays, man. I wanna I wanna celebrate uh, Eminem. My I call her Eminem, Marseille Martin. I know everybody looked up oh, Eminem. Okay, okay. The, the young Marseille Martin. Yeah, I call her Mama Say, Mama Sama, Mama mm-hmm. Sa. Ma- Marseille mm-hmm. Martin. She came up with this concept when she was probably 14, 15 years old, but she sold the idea to Disney for a pilot of a show about a black girl with sickle cell that's a roller skater that goes to um, this roller skating rink every Saturday. The the rink is called Saturdays, right? Uh She teams up with Norman Vance Jr. Now, Norman Vance Jr. is the showrunner. I found out what a showrunner means Uh after working with Norman Vance Jr. You Uh know what I'm talking about? Uh So Disney said to Norman, okay, We've got all these other shows on Disney. We're very successful. We're Disney. But we would like you to create something a little bit different. We would like you to take it to another level. When people say Disney Channel show, they don't want to just think brightness and that, over-animated parents, that type of stuff. I want you to really make something grounded. He likes Say Less. So his process throughout filming was him talking to Disney and saying, okay, here's what I got. Here's what I want to do. And they're like, well, that's not how we do it on Disney. He's like, well, that's not how, what you hired me for, correct? And he's like, you're right. Carry on. Right? So then he had to build this cast. So the, the the audition process was uh-huh. fun because we're in the middle of this pandemic. Now we're in the pandemic, so we're we're reading and meeting people through Zoom. Uh-huh. So I'm used to working the room. I'm used to being this comedian, walk in, I see somebody, I'm talking about they had the guy, oh, this swag, you know, this and that type of thing. We're in Zoom. So I'm in a room with a <laughs> drapes behind me, which all I see is my face in this box. So as I'm doing my scene, everyone goes on mute. So I get no feedback during the scene. Uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I do yeah. a joke. No one's laughing. Okay, I just got to keep. All I see is myself. This is crazy. This is, you know, uh. after we finish the scene, they all pop back on. Man, that was hilarious. I was like, oh, thank God. I didn't know. I couldn't tell because I couldn't hear nobody laughing. They're like, well, we didn't want to interrupt you. I'm like, no, interrupt me. I need that feedback. I yeah. need that, you know, keep, be you unmuted. Feed off the, the feedback. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So keep the keep the lines lines open. So anyway, so we get through that. Then um, they're like, you're moving on. We're going to do a, uh, uh, what they call, um, well, they piece you together, match you up with, mm-hmm. with people to see. Chemistry, chemistry read. Chemistry yeah. read. There yeah. you go. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I need more, I need more coffee. There you go. Mm-hmm. It's black. <laughs> need that fist. Need, <laughs> need that, that fist. Need that fist. Um, so so uh, the first person that I read with uh, that they matched me up was um, our lead, Danielle Jalladay. Mm-hmm. And the first time I heard her read, I was like, oh, that's her. She's That's 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 definitely her. Black girl magic. She got the hair, the Afro puff. She got the co- Every time we read with her, she had a different hairstyle. I was like, go ahead, girl. And she, you can see her. Um, really working on it. 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like every read, it wasn't just the same read. It was like, wait, this is a different scene, but she's throwing in different things. Okay, go ahead, girl, right? And then we wanted to match up with the different parents. The first woman that I read with was Miss Golden Brooks. Golden Brooks. Come, Come on, on now. Girlfriend. Love go ahead. Her. I'm glad you sung it. My voice ain't, my voice ain't woke up yet. My voice okay. Ain't, but yeah. So, and when I met her, she come pops in the room and it's, hey, OG. I'm like, oh, what up, Golden? Go ahead, girl. Look at that blue you got on YouTube, man. Oh, we coordinated. We didn't, like, we're just bantering back and forth before. And they're all just watching us go. Like, how long y'all known each other? I'm like, we are just now meeting. Wow. Our chemistry clicked like that. And we get through our read. You know, I find out that Danielle had booked it. And I'm like, God is good. Because I always, I'm just like, that's, she's it. She's going to be the face of this show. And it's, it, it's a beautiful thing. And, and then, you know, we get on set. Uh, the next person I meet is Jermaine Harris that plays my son on the show. Mm-hmm. And he reminded me, take this compliment, my brother. He reminded me of myself on Smart Guy. Yeah. He was the guy that was a scene stealer. Mm-hmm. When he opened, he walks into the room. He doesn't have to be, he don't need no coffee. This kid turned it on and everyone's smiling. And I'm just like, boy, he's just, okay. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not going to have to do much work on this show at all. These yeah. guys, you know what I'm saying? And then they cast uh, Daria Johns and um, Peyton Baznight mm-hmm. as the other two girls that are beside Paris Johnson, which is Daniel Jalladay, who plays our daughter on the show, right? So they form a skating group called We Be Girls, mm-hmm. right? So the show is, 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 it is bright. It's got the black girl magic. It's got the hair, different hairstyles. I mean, you're showing a representation of a black girl that every black girl can be proud of, okay. right? Every black girl. Like, it's like I've seen on Disney, Disney. Channel. Yeah, you know what I'm big. saying? Yeah. And if you ain't got Disney Channel, it's not a must. You can also watch it on Disney Plus. Look at yeah. that. Mm-hmm. There you go, bars, man. bars. There you go. Uh, so uh, the dope thing about that is that, you know, again, we're sitting there going, oh, man, it's Disney. Well, Disney, like, well, it was on Disney Plus. Disney's moving into a new era. They would like it to be new and edgy, so we bring in uh, two of the baddest uh, roller skaters in Chicago okay. where we filmed this bad boy. You know, shout out to um, Hymeria, who's actually, uh, uh, she's a, um, a choreographer, mm-hmm. right, that learned how to skate. So we already know she got moves now, right? And then uh, Josh Smith, which we call Bat Smoke, mm-hmm. which is one of the best skating teachers you will ever meet in your entire life. Like, he don't matter what level you're at. You think you can, can you skate? Yeah, I'm good, bro. You good? I'm from oh, you the good, town. Good. I'm from the town. And you can turn around backwards, all that jazz. Yeah, you I'm not. Do... I'm no usher. Right? But, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 you know, <laughs> that's funny. You say that. I was studying him all week. Like, damn, <laughs> usher is getting it. No, I kept saying, Josh. Josh, can you get me like this? He's like, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. we'll get you close. We'll get you close. Yeah. But um, but he was a bad man. I mean, he'll tell you take off one skate, just push across the room. This is how you hold your foot in the boot. You know, mm-hmm. and he straightened me. I give me. Right. Yeah. I was like, bro, how do I turn backwards? He's like, okay, look, stare at the wall right there, and I point your foot this way, and I lean this way, and, I, and then I just spun. I said, what the hell just happened? He's like, you just skated backwards, brother. I was like, sensei. There like you this go. man, yeah. you know, really got us right. You know what I mean? And they let him choreo- uh, choreograph these scenes that you will see every episode. It's such an exciting, fun show to watch. We also throw some animation up in there. Uh-huh. We'll do it stylized like blackish. You uh-huh. know what I mean? To where they'll do cutaways. You know, there's this thing she says every week, like, oh, you know, what? When do I do too much? And then we'll say, Gary, what about that time you went to such and such? And then they'll yeah. have an animated scene uh-huh. of her doing too much. So we ain't got to film it. You know what I mean? It could, it could be as exciting as you want because it's going to be animated. But then you got something for the kids for that. And then you bring parents in like myself and Golden who have been doing this for a while. You know what I mean? So once you cut to us, you already know that the, the level of funny is going to change a bit. But that don't take nothing away from these kids who are just so awesome, man. Bro, They're you so just good, described so Saturdays, man. That was per- Give them a round of applause. That's how you sell a series. Hey, man, I'm telling you, you got to cut. You gotta hey, yo, but, but considering all your experiences and all the great work you've done, you look, mm-hmm. you, 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 you look so passionate excited about Saturdays. Oh. Uh, that I'm happy for you, man. Thank I can't you, wait to watch it. Fridays, 9 p.m. on the yes, Disney sir. Channel or Woo. Disney Plus. It'll be available the next day. Yes, sir. Um, you have to come back to the show. Yes, sir. Okay. You got to come Accept back it. to the show. Okay. Accept it. Would you come back? I, tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, but well, yes. No, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, eventually. Yeah, okay, great, great. Yo, cool. I'll come back. I got so much to touch on. You've man. had such an immaculate career uh, and all the um, the trials and tribulations you face to get to where you are right yes, now sir. and still to have this energy, man. I commend yeah. you, brother. Thank Tell you, your man. brother, send my love to your brother. Will too. do. Tell Will him do. I said salute to him. I am. Uh, I'm gonna t- When I hang up, I'm going to say uh, he was playing our uh, daddy's song as soon as I sat down and he said salute. And he'll be like, what? Because he's, he's on a boat. He's always on a boat. That's what? Right. That's what he's going to say to me. What? He did? That's what he's going to say because he's hoarse too. He lost his voice. He's, yeah, yeah. What? Oh, Okay, yeah. tell him I love him. Okay, tell him I'll him. tell him. Uh, I got his email. I'll text him. Text just him. like him, too. Yeah. Like, t- I love him. Yeah, that's, that's how he Tell him I love him, too. We're going <laughs> to end with this song you made. Church, let's do it. It's called yes. Legacy Man. It drops on uh, in two days, the day after my father's uh, 
Father's birthday, man. So I'm okay. really excited Beautiful. about all streaming platforms, man. Shout out to Keys the Mogul who came with me with the beat. Shout out Cuzzo and uh, and his wife the Butlers that introduced us, man. We're really excited uh, about this, man. Hope y'all enjoy. Oh, 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 oh